All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about filming underwater. Easiest way to do it is probably with a GoPro. You know, you spend a couple hundred bucks, it's already waterproof and you end up with a decent image, right? But how about if you wanna step it up a little bit, maybe I wanna take my A7S under there or my Canon C70. Now, back when I was shooting on the Canon T2i, I did get an underwater housing for it. It was made by Polaroid and it was great because it was waterproof up to like over 100 feet. But what I didn't like about it was that it took up so much space in a suitcase. So if I was gonna go travel internationally with it, I never brought it along. It was too much weight and just took up so much space. And also it was very specific to the Canon T2i. All the buttons didn't work with any of the other cameras. So as soon as I upgraded my camera body, that case basically became useless to me. But lately I've been wanting to get back into it, especially now that I live closer to the water. So I've been doing a little bit of research and came across a brand called Outtex. I reached out and lately I've been talking to the founder, JR, who's gonna give me a crash course on filming underwater. Now what's cool about Outtex is that it seems like it's a hybrid you get a nice solid glass element up front and also on the back so you can see your display but the rest of it is soft so it's collapsible you can store it in a really small bag it barely weighs anything easy to take in the backpack it's also modular so no matter what kind of camera you're trying to shoot in it'll probably fit now before I jump on a boat and get eaten by a shark we're gonna start off by taking the crash course at JR's pool so let me get changed and let's head on over well, first of all, do you think my uniform's okay? I think you look good. You're, you look prepared. Yeah. I couldn't tell which part was muscle and which part was air. It's all muscle. Okay. You'd mentioned that you're an Olympic swimmer. So yeah, I competed in the 92 Olympics. I competed in the 100 freestyle, the 100 butterfly, and the 200 IM. We're gonna have to race before the end of the day. Oh my god, I can't believe how long they hold their breath for. Should I just do a whole underwater sure, vlog? Like yeah. Most popular ones are probably a, a hard dive case and also bag, right? On one end of the spectrum, you have what we would call bags. They're inexpensive, but they're hard to use. They're, it's a bit like using oven mitts with your camera. On the other end of the spectrum, there are hard cases, but the buttons are dedicated. They tend to be heavy. No product is Nirvana, right? Every product has its pros and cons. So if you're strapping oxygen to your back, if you're really going scuba diving, you should definitely get scuba gear. We just tried to come up with something, like I said, that gets you very comfortably into the space without breaking the bank and make it extremely portable. So between the covers and the ports, you can literally pack it you know, in the bag that you already own. You don't need a case for your case and you have it at all times. So here is my personal A7. I promise you're not gonna drown this. I promise. Is it an option to leave an ND filter on here? You could in theory put it on the outside. You could use it on the inside and you could also use a dome that accommodates the filter inside of the dome and then the dome on the outside. So normally what I do is I just turn the camera off, make sure that the battery's on, that the memory card, everything that you need for the shoot is ready to go. And normally what I do is I start this way so I get it from the back. Once you've got the cover on, you would attach to the lens filter and you'll notice that the cover also has a built-in O-ring. You line it up so that it's nice and even. You can think of this lip as the male and then the washer has a female. You want to hold the internal Altex component and then with the other hand, you're applying the pressure. If the seal wasn't properly done or if, for example, there was a problem, you would see bubbles coming out and that's your indication that there's a problem. But as you can see, it's a pretty resilient material. It's very elastic and you just kind of bring it around. All right, so now it's time for the rear glass and I see there's a quarter inch right here. So that's, that's right. to keep it in place. That's right. That just goes on to your tripod mount and now the process is the same. So you do a couple turns until it catches. Take it in the water. It floats, by the way. And if I submerge it, what I'm looking for are air bubbles. If I had a stream of air bubbles coming from anywhere, I would know that something is not working. You have several seconds, if not a minute, between that and any damage actually happening. 
I see. Right? So even if you saw bubbles coming out, you're like, oh, that, that doesn't look right. Let me check it again. Right. And then when you do the submersion test, you can see that there, are, there is no air coming out. Ah. And that gives you a very good feeling. Okay, so that definitely gives you a little bit more confidence. So what's it like modeling underwater? But it's kind of like dancing. You know, you're floating, you're weightless. You feel very elegant. It's a lot of fun. Do you have to have a lot of control over your buoyancy so that you're not floating up to the surface or sinking to the bottom? That is something that you really have to figure out because of course if your lungs are full then you're going to float and if you're completely empty then you're not going to be able to stay in the water for very long. So there is a balance where you kind of want to like exhale just enough so that you can float but not too much that you're going to feel like you're drowning. Is it hard to not make a face? Like to avoid the panic face, I think it takes practice. I have been in like a water baby since I was a kid. And so for me, it's not that difficult, but I, I you have to be conscious of it, you know? And, and I think, uh, I don't know, as a kid, I used to practice like pretending to be a mermaid and what that would be like. Are there any sort of chemicals or materials or anything that you have to do to kind of maintain all the O-rings or anything like that? Maintenance is pretty low, but you can use soap. So especially if you're on the ocean, if you're on boats with petroleum based products and all that, what you want to do is you want to hand wash it when you're done with some mild soap and clean tap water, let it dry and then keep it in a dry, cool place. We also sell some lubricant. It comes pre-lubricated and that could last years depending on use, but you can always get more and very small amounts will also go a long way. I love the fact that I'm able to manipulate this camera as much as I am because I did not dial in any of my settings beforehand. My camera's giving me issues. It's saying unable to read memory card reinsert. So something must have happened. But oh, look at that. I could take out the memory card and I could put him in through the case. Now that's convenient. Can we did not plan up? that. That was not planned. <laughs> All right, it's working now. How's the audio quality out of this thing? Hello, this is what it sounds like. It probably sounds muffled. This would be a good example of what that dome does because you can see the photos that he takes is that nice 50-50 where it looks nice and natural. You get half over water and half under, opposed to my video clip where you can see that I'm either over water or underwater and it looks like it zooms way in every time I go underneath. The issue I'm having is that I keep coming right back up to the surface. Now, do you just sink because you're just nothing but muscles? What actually is happening is when you let your air out, you'll sink. Yeah. So you have a lot of air, but I'm comfortable letting all my air out and then I sit down. Oh, I don't like that feeling of having no air in my yeah. lungs and sitting, but uh, let's give it a shot, I guess. All right, so that worked. That takes a little bit of getting used to because you know how usually you're like, <gasps> or do you go down? You have to go, <sighs> and then you like have no air. There's like this psychological thing about it where you almost don't want to do that. You want to have a lot of air when you go in, but you kind of have to do the opposite. Okay, so quick disclaimer this is also how people drown. So please don't go around dying and then saying, a potato jet told me to do it, all right? Okay, on with the video. One thing you could just practice on your own is just to go to your pool and even without a camera, you just practice your breathing to try to stay floating at the level you want. When I was doing uh, my scuba diving certificates, there's this course I took called the uh, Peak Performance Buoyancy. And all they teach you to do is exhale to sink and inhale a little bit to come up. And they had us hold a rock and just float there, not hit the ground, but not float up to the surface. So that's something that you can just practice and that's a really valuable skill for this kind of thing. It's been a long time since I took that class, so I feel like I'm relearning it. Now, right now we're just working with natural lighting. So I imagine, you know, if you have a pool, you have to really think about what time you're gonna shoot, right? Yeah, we could do a whole video on lighting. There are lots of different options for lighting. And of course, you know, natural light is great. You can augment that. Sometimes I've done water shoots uh, completely in the dark where all you're using are lights. So it's like, a, you can think of it like a studio. I'm trying to keep my arms stable under there so I don't want to have to use my hands at all. So I'm going to try using these fins. Fins are really awkward if you're not used to them. I imagine like when we go into the ocean, we need these fins. So I might as well practice while we're at the pool. Okay. It's nice because at any point you just let go of the camera and just, uh, you know, when you're on land, you have to figure out, oh, where's a safe place to put it right here. Just, Oh, until it floats away, of course. Yeah, in an open water environment, it's nice to have the wrist strap or the neck strap, you know, like if you're doing stand-up paddle boarding. So I'm glad we're doing day one in a pool because if we were trying to learn all this in the ocean with waves and salt water, it, it's gonna be as pleasant. <laughs> more, more steps on the curve. Yeah. Exactly. If you're a wedding photographer and all of a sudden you need to do a trash the dress 
shot, mm -hmm. you know, that, that can help you differentiate yourself and your work. I love that, trash the dress. That sounds like a cool shoot right there. <laughs> Our brides will want a photo shoot of their dress because they really don't get to use it again. So they'll do a shoot where they'll trash it. Right, so they'll either get in the mud or they'll do dirt or they'll rip it or do something. And so if you've got a housing like Altex, you can really differentiate yourself from all the other wedding photographers out there. Because whether it's on a beach shoot or in a pool shoot like this, you can do some pretty cool stuff. And on top of that, when you have this thing on there, you don't have to worry about rain or mud or even dirt. Oh, people use it for dirt all the time. You know, if you're even if it's like a baseball shot and you want the dirt flying over the camera. We had a shoot with Suzuki where they literally were in the sand and the truck drove right by the camera and you're, you know, covered in mud. Now let's say I accidentally scuff the lens up against the rock. Is it an option to just get a replacement front element? Absolutely. So all of our parts are interchangeable and in our online store, they're shot by parts and we sell all the parts we make individually. So good news, we made it through day one and we didn't drown any of the cameras. And yes, I did even put my Canon C70 under there, but I definitely learned a few things. Buoyancy is something that we already talked about and controlling your breathing so that you sink just the right amount. But another thing I noticed that they were really, really good at is getting to the bottom of the pool really, really fast. So I was doing this whole thing where I exhale and try to push myself underwater, but they would do this thing where they hop up and then exhale and then they would just fly to the bottom of the pool. So not only were they able to hold their breath way longer than I could, but they were able to get into shooting position way faster. So that's another thing that I need to practice. Now I'm sure once you get your underwater housing, you're gonna to wanna to go straight into the ocean, but I'm very happy I did that pool day just so that I have that comfort with the equipment and not only just the camera equipment and the underwater housing, but also things like fins is something that you really have to get used to and also goggles. You wanna make sure that you have a set of goggles that fit really nicely. If you have a leak in your goggles, and you're in salt water, that could ruin your day and it's gonna have a really bad impact on being able to see what your camera is doing. And since the Outtex has that nice big window in the back, I had a lot of confidence that the shots were in focus and they were gonna look good. So it was a very pleasant experience and now I think I'm ready to go out there for part two of this video. We are also funding another project for the Potato Farm Project because we have Musicbed sponsoring this episode. What is Musicbed? Well, if you like any of the music you hear in this video, it's all thanks to their library. I'll throw a link down there in the description so you could go listen to them. They have really high quality music that you can license for your own videos. And that just makes the editing process that much more fun and creative. All right, Dylan, you wanna tell us about the concept we are funding on this project? This is for Roman Marchuk of Miami, Florida. Roman writes, I went to Costa Rica for 18 days and was shooting a wildlife documentary. Filming in rough conditions on Canon R5, putting that camera through hell, so as the drone. Literally had to back up every night 512 gigabytes of footage. I have a YouTube channel and have a lot of short films, but it's always been my dream to make an actual full length film. I picked up all my gear, including 150 to 600, took my girlfriend for BTS, and we shot nonstop. Literally. We got so much incredible footage, I am still hyped. Pretty much the plan was to go to every part of Costa Rica and try to find wildlife that is native to that part and create short stories about this or that animal we saw and then connect it all to a full 90 minute film of our journey seeing what we saw and tell stories. All right, Roman, we'll be reaching out to you to send funding your way. Congratulations, excited to see this finished project. Anyways, Dylan, do you know that I raced an Olympic swimmer in the pool? Yeah. You wanna see the footage? Let's do it, you win? Mm, yeah, sure. Is it time for me to put you to shame with the race? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was hoping you'd forgotten about it. <laughs> to the diving board and back. Oh, actually, I'm legit gonna try my hardest. On your marks, set, go! You got this, Jude! You, 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 don't, you, you don't got this, I'm sorry. You, you don't got this at all. It's not even close. <laughs> Did I win? <laughs> we'll fix that. What did I do? <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm going, I'm going. I see you going ahead, and then all of a sudden, like, you kick off the wall, and then you're like, Shoo. I'm like, what the heck? Holy cow! I've had some practice at this. We have to answer some questions from the audience. Okay, well, let me catch my breath first. Question number one: How to do it affordably? Get a close-up of me thinking. If only there was a way. I know Ziploc bags. Sam says, can I get the day off tomorrow? I thought we were gonna edit this video tomorrow. To be honest, I thought you were gonna be editing this. 
Best way to set up white balance. I noticed that the underwater modes, they add more of a magenta tint. I'll go off of skin tone. So I'll use some post editing and I'll focus on the skin tone to look right. And then I'll work my way around that. Does water pressure affect the equipment? Scuba gear, for example, is designed to protect the camera and it's designed to withstand pressure. Altex is not. The housing, in essence, doesn't care. So it's rated for 10 meters or about 33 feet, but we've had people go twice that because the housing itself is flexible and below a certain depth, that water pressure will start pressing the camera buttons. So eventually the camera just won't respond or it'll start acting crazy. And that's how you know you've gone too deep. Definitely, that's something I noticed with uh, the GoPros. I'm not sure about the nine, but I know like for sure the, the five and the six, I would take it diving and right around 30 feet, I couldn't control the camera and I thought, oh crap, is it broken? But then later I went down a couple more times to realize all the buttons are being pressed in. So that's why it's not responding to anything. And one of my favorite things about shooting in the water is the three dimensionality of it. On land, you're limited by gravity and you know, you can only do so much. But underwater, in a way, you are the drone. You can be above the subject, you can be below the subject, you can circumnavigate the subject. It is very cool because when I first started shooting, I kept thinking, okay, let me just be on the side. And then at a point you had her swimming over us and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot you can do that now. Well, we'll have to do a part two because I definitely want to go into the ocean. I want to know what it's like to do different types of shooting. Now the uh, wood chipper has started, so that pretty much wraps up our shoot for the day. Let's go ahead and cut to the close.